Hello artists, it's Kelly Folsom here and I'm so excited to be doing this simple scenes, simple landscape scenes masterclass with you. I wanted to do this masterclass with you because these are universal scenes. They are sometimes scenes that we might just walk by and not think to paint them. But, so they might seem like there's nothing to write home about for them, right? But the magic of oil paint is that we can take a very, very simple, everyday landscape scene that doesn't seem all that beautiful, all that impressive, and we can bring it to life by using light and color and also choosing a really strong composition. All right, so you don't need to have a amazing exotic scene to make a fantastic landscape painting. So also doing plein air, it gives you a really great opportunity to study light, study atmosphere, study creating depth. And so when you choose simpler scenes, it really helps you to build all of those fundamentals so that we're not just focusing on this flashy you know subject matter some subject matter that is always going to be appealing no matter what so when you choose a simple scene like what we're going to paint this morning um, then you really have to hone your skills as an artist to turn that into something and when you build that kind of skill set that is going to pay off in spades for the rest of your art life and it's going to give you so much um, reward in the long run rather than just being dependent on um, flashy, you know, flashy exotic, you know, travel scenes or something. All right, so I'm super excited about this. I love these kind of scenes. These are the kind of scenes that no matter where you're at in the world, I'm sure you can find a scene like this. Um, today we are just at this simple little lake. We're going to be painting this backlit um, arch of trees and the still pond lake in front of it uh, and the re reflections in that water. So incredibly simple yet beautiful. So let's dive in and get started. Okay, artists, let's get going on this beautiful yet simple scene make some magic um, okay so we don't need anything too complicated we've got a simple color palette here we've got a few simple brushes these are those gorilla painter short handle brushes that come with this push -on box you can check the supply list for all of these materials um, if you want to get set up like I am and then we have a simple color palette here. We've got six colors in white. So we've got ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cad yellow deep, cad lemon, yellow ochre, Naples yellow extra. Um, most of, let's see, these four, all these colors are from Vasari from the Corot landscape set, which is the set I'll be using in this series, except for the cadmiums, which are from Sennelier. Um, so I've added those in. And then I've got my medium, the Old Masters Merge. I like a speed drying medium. So if you don't have Merge, you can use Neo Megulp. You can use uh, Liquid Light Gel is another good one. Um, and then my Titanium Zinc White, which if you don't know Vasari, Vasari is very <laughs> kind of oily paint. And so this has slid all the way down here. But I actually prefer a really juicy, really oily, really oily paint whenever I'm painting plein air um, because I really need that paint to move around. Um, so I do prefer titanium zinc for plein air painting uh, because the zinc just adds a little bit of warmth um, and cuts that coolness and that opacity that pure titanium has. So pure titanium really kills the color so quick. And when I do still life painting, I always use Kremnitz white or flake white, and that's a lead-based white, and it's, very, it's a very soft tinter. So I choose titanium zinc for that reason. It's kind of an in-between for that, um, for the, uh, in between the flake white and titanium white in terms of how it behaves. 
All right. When you're choosing simple scenes like this, you do want to think about composition. And one of the most time-tested um, compositions that is always successful is something called a tunnel composition. So it's basically, and we're painting contra jour, which is basically backlight in this case. Um, but a tunnel is like essentially what it sounds. So this is essentially the idea of the composition that we're creating a tunnel with all these trees and these backlit trees, they're dark against light. And then creating this um, peekaboo of light here. Now, I love these trees on the left because they are so like lyrical and they have that really long, slender quality. And I'm gonna take these off the canvas. So right now I'm just kind of blocking these in with the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna just to get a neutral dark going. And I love how none of them are exactly the same angle. It's like they're doing a little dance or something. So it's really, really beautiful. And in painting, you just want to start from work from dark to light, thin to thick, and also big shapes. So I'm just trying to get in the big main masses, trying to group all these darks together, leaving a few sky holes where I see they might be needed. You always want to close down or de-emphasize contrast up in the corner because you want to keep the viewer in your picture plane as long as possible. So knowing that, then I know what kind of details I need to let go of over here, what kind of contrast, and we've got the bank here, which is in cast shadow. These trees kind of remind me of uh, Monet's, is it the poplar trees? And then, um, the reflection, just connecting all these darks up, not going for detail right now. Reflection of those in the water. We do want to emphasize where is that bank. Okay, we've got a little bit of reflection on this side. So this tree over here will definitely hold the viewer in the picture uh, the longest. So if I just left this open, it would not be a tunnel composition and then the viewer could just exit out possibly. So creating this dark mass here at the end of the painting also helps hold the viewer's attention on the light because as human beings we focus on light and color um, and that's what we'll want to look at the most is the light and the color. And the thing that is you know the most contrast so creating surrounding all this light with all this dark is creating a lot of visual contrast, which um, us as the viewers really respond to. We really look for the um, color contrast and value contrast. Oops. Okay, so you wanna get this black and white version first on your canvas. Um, this tree over here in real life is nothing like these trees. So I am making it look like these trees because that is no good for my composition to all of a sudden put in a different shape of tree. It's like shorter and fatter. So that would totally not be um, harmonious with this composition. And so I'm just making it look like these and taking it off the canvas. You know, so this big negative shape here is okay because it's close to the center. Okay. So I'm just using, I don't know what number this is, but kind of a middle size of that, that set that you can get from Gorilla Painter. Um, the next thing I want to do actually is just kind of block in where is this back ridge of trees back here and where is the hill? I'm making that a little bit smaller than what it looks like in real life. Okay. Good. Just as a guide for myself. Okay. Then I'm going to go straight in for some sky color, starting with my ultramarine blue, but I'm really just barely have a little bit on my brush. It's mostly going to be this Naples yellow light, white, and a little bit of that ultramarine blue. 
I really want to go for a very tonal look here in this painting, not super colorful. You know, with backlighting, it tends to get very value based and not about color because the value contrast is so, so high. And actually this whole scene is very, very tonal in its look. Um, a little bit of yellow ochre in there as we get down here. Your sky always gets a little warmer towards the bottom because of all that reflected light. I'm gonna cover up where that guide was for myself and then just using the back of my brush, um, the side of my brush rather, kind of turning it to the side to get some smaller. You can see I added in some blue, more blue to get a darker sky mixture, a little bit of yellow ochre. And with that to get a little bit of a darker sky mixture for some of these sky holes. Go ahead and put those in. We're gonna be painting a lot over them. Okay. Now for these back trees, again, I'm thinking tonal, so I'm going to do ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. <clears throat> I want to keep them cooler so that they recede. They are darker than the sky. I just want to keep them really simple. I don't want to just stare at those trees and get in every detail, but your um, this is our middle ground, essentially. In every painting, you want to have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background to get maximum depth. So three layers of space. So this is our middle ground. Just adding in some more blue to go a little bit darker at the base for the cast shadows that are in there. A little bit of burnt sienna as well. Just a tiny touch so it goes a little bit violet but we're not talking a big value contrast this whole mass needs to read still is lighter than the tree forms in front of it and darker than the sky but when i say darker it's very very minimal and we're just going to follow that through although a lot of that will end up getting covered up okay wiping my brush now i'm going to move down to this is the next lightest value um, the sky being the lightest and then this ground plane being or, or you could think of it next darkest so this would be value number one value number two goes here value number three and then value number four our darkest um, so we essentially have four values happening in this painting is what we're doing okay um, and that all has to do with the angle of objects to the light source and really your sky is your light source, so it will be the lightest and brightest. All right, so now, since this is moving in closer to us, I can add a little more color. So I'm gonna reach for my Cad Lemon, get sort of a greenish color. I'm mixing right into that blue mixture though. When I'm painting plein air, I am mixing right into the same piles, you know, just adjusting that color mixture. It's really, really helpful to get color harmony. So we're going to get a little bit of light here on the bridge. You could curve it if you want, or you could keep it straight, straighter. I do like to create somewhat of a soft edge there so that it feels kind of soft and grassy. And as I pull down here, I can also get a little more color, more blue and yellow ochre, a little warmer as we come down to the front, to the bank. And I also know that I'm going to kind of want to open up this bank right here so that all this reflection and everything flows a little bit easier. I'm going to go vertical strokes, get some of that green in the water. And of course, some of the sky color in the water as well. Some blue, blue and white as well for reflection of the sky in this section. Okay, now let's move to the actual tree forms them, their, themselves. Whoa. Tighten this up, I'm getting a little bit of glare. So if you're getting glare outdoors, be sure to tilt your 
canvas forward some. All right, I think I'm gonna switch back now to this medium size brush. Now that I've got all those bigger shapes in. They have an attachment for this I need to order for brushes. So that's next on the to-do list. Okay, so we're gonna start with the uh, value of the trees, ultramarine blue, some yellow, cad yellow deep, a little bit of burnt sienna. So you want to be sure to keep, definitely keep these forms darker. I just kind of want to test out like how dark. We need it to be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to add in some yellow ochre. Not white, because white's going to go way too cool in light and value. Maybe instead of the Cad Yellow Deep, let's try add, adding a little tiny touch of that Cad Lemon. And for me, that is going a little too green green, you know, so I'm going to add in a little bit of that Burt Sienna. I want it to be a little more neutral. And it also needs to read as cool, which right now is hard to judge because we don't have any of the warm lights. So actually, I'm just going to do, I think, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre for the most part. That always creates a nice, cool neutral. And the yellow ochre give, brings in a little bit of a lighter value so it doesn't just go to black. Because even though these are dark against light, they don't necessarily just go to black. So. I'm actually just going to keep dipping into these three mixtures because if they're not all one one color it's kind of nice to get some color variety in there and you can see i kind of turn my brush to the side to get these more kind of separate pieces we don't want to get too many of those but a few goes a long way and if you're picking up some light that's totally okay main thing is we want to make sure that the, this form really feels like it's overlapping in front of that background. And so you've got to put down thick enough paint, you've got to make a sharp enough edge against the sky to get it to feel like it's overlapping. Now down here at the bottom, um, the foliage will start to get a little darker because the sun is up at the top and back. It's actually kind of top back left. So this is where you can start to deepen the value a little bit. Down here. So just adding a little more blue, perhaps a little more burnt sienna to your mix. Just gonna scrub a lot of this in just to get it started. And when you're working outdoors, it's, you know, speed is of the essence, but you don't feel hurried. There's no need to feel rush. You just know that, you know, this is a plein air sketch. The light is always moving and changing. You cannot afford to get lost in the details. You have to think big. And so doing plein air work or, you know, for example, like doing demos like this, it really builds your simplification skill set as an artist. Um, too many artists, artists who are learning, are just giving themselves way too much time to produce something. So um, they're not building that simplification mindset when it comes to their painting. And this is really a detriment because every great artist is always super wonderful at simplifying and editing and seeing the bigness, seeing the connection of the scene, seeing how everything ties together in some way and so you always start with these nice big shapes and then you put in a little bit of detail okay so we're going to follow that color through i like to go vertical strokes as you notice for reflections and then come back sometimes i just kind of come back and like destroy it a bit, a bit i know i want this reflection to not be quite so harsh 
So I'm just kind of mixing that in with that white. Okay, so let's go to this one over here, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. When you can see whenever I get to the, against the sky, I start kind of slowly, gently blending some of that color in to get that atmospheric look, that kind of hazy atmospheric look. So the other thing I see people, uh, artists do that I work with at workshops and things is, is just trying to be too perfect and precise or too early on. You know, so in a way you kind of do want to make a bit of a mess. I mean, but it's like, it's a controlled chaos. You know? <laughs> So you can see I'm making broader, flatter shapes on the interior and then slightly more delicate shapes on uh, the edge, sort of that lacy, it's where we'll get more of that kind of lacy edge work to the uh, foliage there. And keep in mind, all of this needs to feel like it's overlapping in front of that back hill, like, you know, this here. And we haven't gotten to our warm version, like that dappled light, that golden light filtering through. So that's our next step. Okay, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. There's some other stuff, you know, mixing in there and that's okay. Start, start your stroke at the base of the bank and then drag up. I, I like to kind of go flat and then turn my brush to the side to get sort of that grassy look. And you know, you might find a stroke that, you know, really is intuitive to you and really works for you. I think that's important too, just trying things out. There is no, <laughs> there is no like one way to do something. And so brushwork is one of those things that, you know, a particular artist uh, styles or the look to their painting will start to become very recognizable as their painting because they've kind of, they've developed like their own brushwork language in a way. You know, it's one of those things that is very personal. Okay, ultramarine blue, I'm going to put a little bit of white in this seeing a lot of violet tone so I'm going to do some ultramarine blue red red burnt sienna and um, and some white you can tell burnt sienna is my only red on the palette that's way too blue it's a little more uh, too light blue there we go so this value can shift a little bit but it can't shift too much or it won't feel like it's in the shadows so it's just got to feel like a little slight change like it's just a little slight change for this brush on the bank some of that over here as well okay now i need to get some of this peekaboo of light from the color on the grass coming through. But as I come over here, I want to get, just like I did with the sky hole color, just a little bit darker. I'm gonna frame out that edge of the tree trunk. These are the details that really pack a punch. So you just, you do your best to make a brush stroke that is very, decisive and if your nervous system isn't operating perfectly and you make a brush stroke that's a little off that's okay you just redo it I mean, there are no mistakes in oil paint that's the beauty of it you can just really as long as it's still wet you can just work it work it work it work it girl 
We don't have to be perfect the first time. Isn't that a relief? Okay, so now let's get to some of that golden dappled light. I'm just gonna, just wanna kind of soften this edge here. Okay, with the dry brush. Let's get to some of that dappled light. So this light is very warm. You know, it's light hitting some of the top limbs. Um, I'm going to start with my Cad Yellow Deep and my Burnt Sienna and just the tiniest little touch of my uh, Ultramarine Blue. I'm just going to look to see where is some of that light filtering through. Over here, and actually that's too big of a jump, so to add in some more blue and red. On this far side, we're definitely getting a lot of that light moving through the leaves, that glow. Some on the inside here. The light is not totally 100% backlight in this scene. It's slightly le to the left. And then you're going to want to also have some of your tree color mixed up as well. Maybe a little bit of a lighter, cooler version so that you can just transition the edges on the inside. So it still looks like one big shape. And so over here, definitely a lot of that cadmium lemon for the light over there. Even kind of filtering in little peekaboos of leaves here. This one for sure, I'm gonna mix those two yellows together, the cad lemon and the cad yellow deep with my blue. Because the light is more on the left, this one gets a lot nice warm light on the left side. So this is where it's just a good opportunity to study what's happening with the light. And light, the lights are warm in this case and shadows are cool, cooler. So you wanna stay consistent with that. That's where those cadmiums are so beneficial to get that kind of glowing look to the light. I want to be careful over here not to add too much, especially close to this edge, too much um, emphasis on any detail. So I want to kind of keep the emphasis on this interior edge. maybe just a few more points of light against the sky to keep that focus more on the interior edge. Um, finding, trying to see if there's any broken color opportunities here in the grasses, like maybe a little extra hit of chroma. A little bit will go a long way just on the center. And then I'll repeat some of that in the water as well. If I know I need something darker, more muted, I've already got all these colors on my palette. I could just mix, like I, I see, saw that purple on there, which will mute the yellow, the yellow green and darken it. You know, so there's no, no need to mix up a whole new color mixture. It's all right there. Okay, so we need to do a little bit more work over here. We're almost there though, a couple finishing touches. And you know, this is a, a really wonderful um, capture of this scene. Got all the bones. All the bones and a little bit of the um, icing on the cake. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so just getting a little more of that warm light. We know since the light is so high that the light will get a little bit quieter looking towards the bottom. So I just want to make sure I'm not going maybe too dramatic. I just want to get more of a transition, you know, really is what it is. And when we put that in on the edge and we have to, you know, of course, soften that transition on the interior. So that's where mixing up kind of a cooler, oops, like maybe a, a cooler neutral blue green again, just to soften some of those transitions. I need to get some more blue out. I want to get some of that warmth in the reflected light over here. Some of that yellow and red here as well. So those horizontal thinner strokes look read more like water, but first, you know, doing the vertical strokes first sometimes it's also just a little bit of back and forth to get it to look just right okay let me get some more blue out and then we will add some finishing touches here wherever my blue is So this little box, you, it stores, you know, your paints underneath, um, comes with a wonderful bag. It's so lightweight and you don't have to use a tripod. You can set it on a picnic table. You can set it in your lap, you know, so you could always have this set ready to go. It, this holds like three panels. It's awesome. And you could have this set basically ready to go in your car at all times. Um, so that anytime, you know, you have half an hour or an hour just to sit and paint and enjoy nature, my goodness, like, we don't need to create masterpieces all the time. It's fun to just go out and play. All right, so I'm mixing up some more of that ultramarine blue, cad lemon, and yellow ochre. to kind of transition a little bit of a lighter, cooler green next to that warm glow. And then in the very center, of course, it goes very dark. And actually, you might be able to put in a little touch of violet. So ultramarine blue, little touch of white, and some burnt sienna for some violet tones because you know, things can get so green so fast. And violet is such a great, like a blue violet is such a great neutral to get in there. I'm just looking to see if there's any other edges that need to be manipulated. I don't want to put a ton of glow over here. I might subtly hint at it just because that is that start of the painting. And remember, we wanna keep the viewer in this section as long as possible. So maybe I'll just use, the, use that mixture, that dark tree mixture of the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre. And just a little bit of that cad yellow deep, maybe a little touch of red, the burnt sienna. Maybe give a little bit of sparkle, but not much on that one. Okay, I don't really think we need a lot of lot more sky holes than what we have here, but hi. 
but let's just see. Yeah, I think a couple more is going to be effective. And this is the kind of detail that like maybe separating out these two trees, foliage a little bit more. This is the kind of detail that a little bit goes a long way. Make sure the tree foliage still feels like it's in front of the sky hole which it is. Make sure it's not too crisp of an edge once we get down in a section like that. Okay, so um, last but not least, we want to do some uh, reflected light on some of these limbs and maybe a couple of additional uh, skinny limbs up at the top. So I'm going to switch to a liner brush and then my smaller flat from that set, the number two. First, I'm going to look to see, I'm going to get uh, some blue, some uh, red ox, I'm sorry, not red oxide, um, or sienna. I'm going to need some medium with a liner brush to get some flow. But, you know, there's a couple of limbs that I think will add that um, lyrical, quality that I really loved. Less is usually more with this sort of thing. But definitely a few of these can be very helpful to make the painting feel more finished or resolved. Sometimes as you're doing this, you start to see, oh, there, there's where I can maybe do another or a bigger sky hole, maybe make that shape a little bit larger. You know, just to kind of frame out, frame out a tree limb. So going back to my ultramarine blue, my Naples yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre, it's basically a darker version of what's over here. Okay, and let's see if there's anything else. Okay, and then down here, there's actually like a little bit of blue, kind of a blue-violet reflecting back into the tree trunk from the water. So I'm gonna use that ultramarine blue, little bit of white and burnt sienna. Need to make it a little bit more burnt sienna. Okay, just for a little reflected light. So when you're painting a hot sunny day like this, all those lights are nice and warm. Reflected lights are cool, reflecting that blue of the sky. And you can see I'm doing, sh not, I'm doing short strokes and your trunk should be thicker at the base, getting more and more slender at the top there. Maybe here's kind of a nice spot, perhaps, to get another trunk in or two. I would be careful to make your trunks too straight up and down. Again, part of what was beautiful about this scene is just the, the lyrical quality to it. Now on this side, some of these trunks are getting just a touch more light, but again, I don't want to activate too close to the edge. So in that case, I'll just use a little more burnt sienna and some yellow ochre in that mixture so I get kind of a warmer color for trunk on this side. Even that seems a little bit light. It's not really sitting back into that shadow too much. It'll dry a little bit darker though because of the, we're painting on top of the dark, so. Okay, 
I think the last little detail that's really going to make all the difference in the world is um, a little uh, stronger ripple of water or reflection. I'm going to start first with the stronger reflection of the sky. More impasto. There with the white and Naples yellow. And you can see how that just really popped that forward and made that more dynamic. And then maybe we do a slightly cooler, darker, kind of a green gray, just to indicate like some of the water hitting the bank back here. Less is more, keep that in mind. <laughs> I always have to remind myself of that too. Like sometimes something like that is so fun and we wait the whole painting to do it and then we just start putting it in everywhere and, you know, mess it up. <laughs> So some blue and white and burnt sienna there for just a little cooler reflection on the shadow side. Um, just want to kind of make sure I get into that little groove there where the holder is. So then last but not least, just take a step back. And just see if there's anything else. Is there anything else that I might need to give a little attention to or a little more piece of um, color or light or detail? And I'm mostly looking in here in the center to see, you know, is there anything there that can get a bit more engaging? And I actually think like a little more texture and color on the grass would, would just add just the right touch. So I'm going to Go for my Cad Yellow Deep, my Naples Yellow Light, and I think something that maybe is in the peach family might be kind of nice. I see kind of some peach tones up there. It's a little intense, so I'm gonna add in some green. But sometimes you don't know until you put it in. You know, you kind of do have to, in a sense, go for it and see if it works. I mean, painting plein air, it's all about learning and growing, experimenting, trying things. At least that's what it's about for me. So sometimes, like if something's getting a little dull looking, then, you know, I might see, oh, maybe there's something else I can do here. So just coming back in with some of those greens be another sky hole here at the base where that foliage is hitting the ground. There's also like some reflected light in the little grasses here. So maybe my two yellows and kind of a bluish mix that I have on the palette. A little more glow in this section or the grass. When you're doing grasses and things like that, try to change direction of your brush stroke so it's not all straight up and down vertical. Let's see, some of this brush kind of has a nice curve to it and some deep darks at the base. The other thing I was thinking was maybe a little hint of warmth on the very top of these trees. I'm gonna keep the value the same, and I know it's gonna to need to be cooler uh, since it's back in space, but see like even that might be a little too green. So I just want the slightest bit of warmth. That's all I'm really after is just a little hit of yellow just on the top of those. Maybe finessing those edges just a little bit more there. So that my light just feels kind of consistent throughout the painting. Warm light, cool shadows.
whenever I stepped back, I thought, oh, this kind of needs a little extra hit of color. I'm just going to use some cab lemon and blue there. Don't get too polka dotty, though. So keep your brush flat. Make nice flat brush strokes. Okay. You are trying to capture enough notes for yourself just in case you would want to, you know, take this into your studio and make it a little bit um, stronger or, you know, bigger and more detailed. So you will need enough details. I'm still feeling like this. I need to be a little bit more. A little more action, perhaps. blue and Naples yellow and white. Sometimes destroying things and then rebuilding it is a great way to get more visual interest. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I hope you've learned a lot so that you can um, take this new understanding into your own plein air work. And remember, these are just studies. These are just sketches. Like, have fun. Get yourself a very convenient little kit like this where you can just paint anytime, anywhere. You're always ready to go whenever inspiration uh, should strike. And um, yeah, remember that doing more paintings and more studies like this is really beneficial to building your skill set. Okay, I'll see you in the next simple scene that we're gonna bring to life through the magic of color and light. Bye.